So on this channel, I've been searching for the perfect split keyboard, and I think I might have finally stumbled upon it. This is by Elim, and it's called the Elytra. What I really like about this keyboard is that it fits a lot of very specific criteria. Number one, it has to use the more regular traditional layout. I don't really like the ortholinear layouts that you would typically get from the Voyager ZSA. Number two, it needs to be totally wireless, so no, no wires in between the keyboard and it needs to support all the functions in Bluetooth mode. I don't want any, anything to be gimped while it's not connected by a wire. Number three, it needs to be customizable and programmable with a very easy intuitive software. I don't wanna to have to hack around QMK or upload firmwares. I just want this to be really easy. And this supports Vile QMK, which is a really popular open source software where you can just use your browser and log in and just program it the way you like. And of course, by that extension, I want to be able to support home row mods and dual layer space bars and stuff like that. And the last thing I'm looking for is I don't want something very bulky. I need to take this everywhere I go. Let's say I want to go traveling internationally. I want to have the best ergonomic experience. And with the trend in airlines <laughs> making things smaller and smaller in terms of your luggage, you really do want something and lighter too. They really check the weights now. You really do need something that is small and lightweight. And this is the perfect keyboard. I just can't believe how well it is crafted. I love the programmability, but more importantly, it feels really good to type on. It, it's, it's just a wonderful keyboard to type on. The, the silent switches are super lubed. So the key innovative design of this keyboard is its premium CNC aluminum construction. And as you can see on the back of this, it has this so-called biomimetic hollowed back structure. And I have to say, it really does make the device look really cool. I love being able to see into the guts of my electronics, but this helps it retain its very structured rigidity, but also maintain a very lightweight at 420 grams. Now I have other lightweight peripherals like this mouse over here, and you can see it follows the same mantra of kind of cutting out holes to make it as light as possible. What's really nice is that it's obviously a low profile keyboard. At its thinnest point, it's 11.8 millimeters thin. And what's nice about that is you don't have to worry about bringing a wrist pad with you. Whereas I had some other competitor keyboards and even though they were light, they were heavier actually, I would have to always bring a wrist pad and that was kind of annoying. So I like that this is flat. So I don't have like my hands being arched up like that, which is a really bad position if you have a really high keyboard. Now, there are some quirks with this keyboard. I've never seen this before, but I guess they're trying to go for symmetry. Even though these are not exactly symmetrical, you can see that the right side is a little bit taller. Over here, they're going for symmetry, so they have an extra B button here. And if you're a touch typist, you actually never reach for the B there. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I just I just ignore it. I don't really bind anything to that. Maybe I can bind it to a special function key. Now, let's do a quick sound test. I'm just going to do a reference point. It's pretty much silent, and I think that's really nice to have. I've noticed that having a loud click clackety keyboard can be a little bit embarrassing in public scenarios. Let's say you bring this to work, or you're traveling in an airport, and or you're on an airplane, or your partner is sleeping next to you in bed in the same room, and you're click clacking away. It can be very frustrating. I don't like it, so I much prefer silent switches, and they feel really good. Obviously, these are linear. Now, yes, you can remove the keycaps and replace the key switches, but the ones that come with it, I think are really good. They're not your typical OEM or Cherry profile. These are obviously slim keycaps. I love the fact that there's no dang wires anymore. And I love that Bluetooth functions just as well as the wired mode. I've had other competitors where modifier keys, dual tap, dual tap function keys, just didn't work when it was using a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And I really don't wanna use a dongle. Like I don't wanna have to worry about taking out this thing, plugging it into, my iPad and then I have to use a converter from USB-A to USB-C. I love the fact that just this just uses Bluetooth and it's very fast, low latency. In fact, apparently this uses a new firmware. It's written in Rust, so it's apparently really fast, better than some other keyboards out there that use the same protocol, QMK, Vial. I just love the having normal wires. It's such a clean, unique experience on my desktop. And then I could quickly switch between three different devices. It is so convenient. And what I've done is I programmed this, I hold the caps lock key, and I can quickly switch between th up to three devices. And right now I'm actually controlling my iPad M3 Air, which I did a review on this channel about. And I have to say, it is a great experience. Being able to simply use Jump Desktop and remote into my Mac Mini, which is a more powerful machine, while I'm away and then using this keyboard, it just feels like I'm at home. I get to use all my familiar key bindings. I love the fact that I have home row mods and a dual function spacebar. I can hold the spacebar and for example, hit E, enter. Another really cool thing is that you have access to a mouse. iOS really sp responds well to this. It detects the mouse movement on like Android OS. So be mindful of that if you have an Android tablet. But 
you don't you don't have to bring this mouse with you basically wherever you go. Personally, I found it very intuitive to bind caps lock key and you hold it down and then I use my pinky and then I can use the mouse and I can just move around, hit F to click. It just feels very intuitive. So I really don't need a mouse while I'm going away. And that saves me an extra piece of weight. So let's talk about their case. It feels very durable. Like this is a fantastic case and it doesn't weigh that much. I think it's only an extra 200 grams. But one of the things I noticed immediately was how you put it in. It slots in very perfectly. So it fits like a glove. So let me just demonstrate that for you. So you put it right in and it kind of just kind of goes in. And what's really cool about this is they left this gap here for better or worse. I would love to have an extra modifier key and it kind of just works perfectly like that. So you take that one and you move it in, kind of just push it in. So it fits nice and snug. It's not going to fall out and they don't touch. And then we're going to close it. And uh, there we go. That is rock solid. I don't know, this is a fantastic case. So the point of a split keyboard is to open up your arms, give you a more ergonomic typing experience. And you can see that it's kind of slanted like this. And that's what I really like about split, split keyboards is that you don't have to have them rigid and straight like that. You can tilt them up like that and it more naturally follows the kind of alignment of your arm and your hands. So when I'm typing on a regular keyboard, it just feels really cramped and like that is just not a very good thing to do. So I definitely recommend investing time and energy in learning one, how to touch type. It does take a while to, to get used to it, to a split keyboard. It can be a little bit difficult if you're new to this, but if you're watching this video, you're probably advanced pro user, so you know how to touch type and you'll never go back to a normal keyboard. It's, it's not only is it just the ergonomics, it's ergonomics in the sense that you could reprogram this to, so, so that you don't really have to move your hands that much. And then what do I mean by that? Well, it's all about the home row mods. So let's dive into Vial QMK, and I'm gonna show you how I set this up. I'm gonna give you all my tips and secrets on how I get the most out of these types of keyboards. All right, to get started, visit Vial.rocks. And this is a browser-based application that allows you to program your keyboard. And what's really cool is that you can use USB-C or you can just pair it wirelessly. It's all the same. And this is unlike some other uh, wireless split keyboards that require have that have different profiles uh, per connection. So I'm going to connect to it. And the first thing I want to talk about are these home row mods. Now you can see left GUI, left alt, control and shift. ASDF, that is the home row. And this allows me to leave my fingers on the home row while still activating modifier keys. And it, you can see that it follows a natural progression of how your modifier keys traditionally live, live at the bottom left corner, left, alt, and control. And what I really like about the shift key on both sides is that I can have opposing pinkies and then I can type, you know, for example, I want to capitalize P, I'll hold down A and it'll trigger as you hold it down and tap P, it'll capitalize P and vice versa. This really solves the problem and I actually prefer this method of typing without having a dedicated shift key on the right side. Other things I really like to do is take advantage of my thumbs. These are very powerful appendages. And for example, on the space bar and backspace, by the way, binding backspace to the other thumb cluster, the other side of the space bar is so, so amazing. It just, it's so much easier to reach that as opposed to the top right corner where you delete or backspace typically is. But anyways, holding them down and hitting layer two. So I'm gonna go into layer two. And then for, for example, E, E means enter. And that's just very intuitive. Or if I quickly wanna use my directional keys or go home and page up, all that stuff, it's right here in this cluster. So it just makes it so fluid and fast. You can just be typing, hitting space, and then you hold it down and then you activate up, down. This makes things like programming, video editing a lot more smooth. Another thing that people should always do is get rid of the caps lock key. It takes up a lot of precious real estate. So being able to hold it and then, or, or tap it to hit escape, which is so nice because now you have, you freed up the escape at the top left corner for Tilda, which is a very popular character these days. So holding it down with the pinky just feels really intuitive, holding it down. And then I'd say I want to go into layer three in my case. Well, now I have my mouse controls intuitively, mouse up, down, left, right, kind of similar to the directional keys, uh, having the scroll wheel, mouse up and down, analogous to home and end for example, or page up, page down. And then I have my media controls in this side over here. And this makes it so fast and easy to quickly go between the different layers. I just love this way of navigating with my keyboard. I can't go back to a regular keyboard and every time I go to my laptop, it just feels really slow and clunky. So there you have it. That's pretty much a quick rundown of my vial. 
keyboard layout. What you can also do is save or load the layout. And if you want, I can save the layout and share it with you. I'll leave a link in the description. So anyways, I hope that gave you a good overview of the Elytra wireless split keyboard. I think it's absolutely amazing. I definitely think you should check it out on Kickstarter. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you have any questions or comments about this, please let me know. I'm very happy to answer. And I will see you in the next video.